The fault line that divides northern and southern Nigeria was clearly visible yesterday. When the Northern State Governors uh, Forum met in Kaduna and resolved to oppose almost everything championed in recent months by their southern counterparts, citing the 1999 Constitution, they dismissed the calls by the Southern Governors Forum for the Nigerian presidency to shift to the south in 2023. According to the 19 Northern Governors, the North has a right to stake a claim to the presidency in the next elections. They also declared that the collection of value-added tax by the states will lead to an increase in prices of goods and services and create interstate trade barriers. The Northern Governors resolved that until the Supreme Court rules on the substantive matter between the River State Government and the Federal Government, the matter is subjudice, and the Northern States Governors Forum will respect this. Now joining us from Jaws Plateau State to discuss the resolutions reached by the 19 northern states and what this says about the widening gulf between the north and the south of Nigeria is Ambassador Yahawa Kwande, Nigeria's former ambassador to Switzerland and deputy chairman of the Northern Elders Forum. Good morning, Ambassador Kwande, and welcome to the program. Good morning. Good morning. Well, uh, Ambassador Kwande, uh, before you joined us, I made the point earlier on that something looked different uh, with the uh, meeting of the Northern Governors Forum yesterday. And what looked different was the presence of His Eminence, the Sultan of uh, Sokoto, uh, leading a delegation of Northern rulers, uh, traditional rulers, uh, to that meeting. Uh, so you have the Northern traditional rulers and the governors are meeting together and taking what looked like a northern position on key national issues. We've mentioned VAT, we've mentioned rotational presidency. Another issue uh, was uh, open grazing, which also that meeting took a position. As an elder statesman, do you think that this is healthy for Nigeria? Salaam alaikum. It isn't healthy at all. I'm happy you corrected my name. My name is Yahya Kwande, not Ban. Uh, the question of differences between the South and the North had been on for a long time. And the question of rotation is not just new. It started since 1919 when the NPN was being established. I remember I was part, party to it. I attended the meeting. And when we were to establish the NPN, the Southern leaders, Akinloye, Ikweme, and the rest of the people, were the people who asked. Nobody forced them. We sat with them and then they said to us in the North that it appears the support of the NPN is more coming from the North. We will concede the presidency to you. And, but that when you go back to the North, you must produce three candidates so that we in the South will participate in bringing one so that he will respect his position as coming from the Federation, not just from the North. And that's what happened. Then we went back to the North and that's how Shagari emerged as a Ken. So it was that arrangement that brought in Shagari into government. Then after the coup, I was still part of it. The PDP then decided to still pay back 
the South for what had happened to them. And in the, that position and the problem that happened, particularly with Chief Abiola, the Northerners on their own too, as it happened earlier with the Southerners conceding the presidency to the North. And that's how we in the North also say that we have to we have to help the Southerners and to keep Nigeria together for them to produce the president. And we went on. And that's how Obasanjo also emerged. That arrangement is not a constitutional arrangement. It's not based on any constitution, any item of the constitution of Nigeria. It was a party plan to win the election because Nigeria was sympathetic to the people of the South for what happened to Abiola. And that's how they elected President Obasanjo. I am still emphasizing that it was an arrangement of the PDP. It's not a, an arrangement based on the constitution of Nigeria. It was a gimmick to win the election. So Obasanjo did eight years. And when he did eight years, then it was now time. It was now time for Northerners Northern to produce a president. Of course, you know what happened. There was an attempt for Obasanjo to continue with another term, and that was rejected by Nigerians. But he also saw it and he helped in producing Umaru Yaradua as a Northerner. So we expected eight years of the North. Then, unfortunately, President Umaru died midstream. And by constitution, and rightly too, and every, nobody argued it, his vice president, Jonathan, was right in completing the term of which the two of them were elected. But then, of course, he would then have left it at that and allow no us, but on the platform of the PDP to now finish the remaining four years so that we go back to the South. You see, these things have been in the mind of leaders to want to keep Nigeria together. Because even at the NPN convention, it was agreed that since the Northerners were to produce the president, then it was unanimously agreed that the Yoruba nation from the old region of northern uh, of um, western nigeria was to give us the chairman of the party while the eastern nigeria the Igbo nation was to give us the vice president and that's why akinloe and uh, and ikweme appeared well, Ambassador Kwande, Ambassador Kwande, uh, sorry to interrupt yeah. you. We need to take a short break. I would like you to stay with us because this is very interesting history uh, for the younger generation. But we'll take that short break and we'll come back to you. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the morning show here on the Arise News channel. Our guest is still Eda Stisman, Ambassador Yahaya, Yahaya Kwande, Nigeria's former ambassador to Switzerland and deputy chairman of the Northern Elders Forum. Ambassador Kwande, thank you very much for staying with us. So you were talking about that political engineering in the uh, National Party of Nigeria and the balancing games with Akinloye and Ekweme and all of that up to the time of uh, the uh, President uh, Goodluck Jonathan presidency. Okay, how do you link that to the present? If you may continue. Thank you very much. Then, instead of President Jonathan finishing his own constitutional right, he decided to go forward and contest the election for another term, depriving the North to produce a president that will complete the agreed term of eight uh, years. That's when the problem started. But people get confused. When Buhari eventually won the election, people then saw him as a northerner fulfilling the arrangement. But no, he succeeded on a platform of the APC, which has no arrangement of rotation of South and North. So therefore, the PDP that has arrangement with their counterparts in the South are still waiting for their four years to complete the agreement. And that's how we started now. People say, well, no, Obasanjo has done eight years. Now another Northerner has now done eight years. So it should go to the South. Nobody says no. APC could also pick their candidate from the South or from the North. In fact, the whole political parties in Nigeria should study the situation and plan how to win the election, which the PDP did, and they are still on it. So the question of, of uh, uh, President Muhammadu Buhari being a Nordana is not a matter of the rotation plan by the PDP between the South and the North. So therefore, I cannot see the reason why people are arguing. We politicians like to thrive on confusion. Otherwise, it is very clear arrangement of a political party. We don't, all these things that we are doing, we are doing it to nudge ourselves into maturity of politics. Because there is no question if the constitution of Nigeria would have agreed for the rotation to be incorporated into our books, it would have. But uh, uh, I heard the Northern governors talking about what has been put down in our constitution, which is right. You cannot win this election. No Northerner can win it without the other parts of Nigeria, and no other part can win it without the North. Because the question of arrangement to be able to win the majority of votes and the two-thirds majority is there. So therefore, if any of the political party thinks they can win the election 
in a particular area or because they have a candidate that they trust. Because don't underrate the thinking of Nigerians. We have gone far in this politics. Go to the villages. It appears people are discussing the real politics more than those in the cities. See them with their radio on their sticks, on their shoulders, sitting under trees and discussing it. Let us not underrate the intelligence and the knowledge of politics by Nigerians in this year. So now the southerners, southern governors that have decided to come forth and said, we want it. They are commanding the, the rest of Nigeria to vote as Southerner. Who among them? What are they talking about? Is it how to get the two thirds? By commanding <coughs> part of Nigeria? But even the North has no right to command the South, Southerners to vote for a Northern candidate. It is a matter of lobbying, campaigning, planning, but PDP has planned that they will rotate between the South and the North. Even when they were talking, it wasn't just South and North. It was a question that now Obasanjo had it for eight years. South, South also contested and won, even though wrongly, to my thinking, the East will take it when it turns back to the South. The same thing with the three zones in the North. Northwest had it, North East will, and North Central, it is a simple confusing the issue, but I haven't taken the position of Southern governors lightly, uh, if not because they are untouchable group of people in Nigeria, I would have said the government should question them because it's like muting the idea of breaking this country. It's actually, um, if I can come in here, quite the opposite if you look at their Asaba agreement, which was the first meeting that they held. They called for a national dialogue to keep the country together. And I wondered why, maybe you could give us some analysis on this. In this communique sure. that has been signed by Governor Lalong, the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, there are no ideas on how to keep Nigeria unified. All that there was that is stated with regards to that is that some governors had earlier supported the idea of a Southern presidency, some governors, but they all condemn the statement. So what does that mean? Are we to take that statement and leave it there? Or do we then need further clarification? Does that mean that the Northern governors will also want to insist in their own turn on a Northern president? And what is the idea from the North on how to keep the country unified? Because they did not state anything along that line. No, but I don't think, from what I heard, in the presentation of the Northern Governor's press issue, they did not demand that it should come to the North. No, they didn't. That would have opposed. They are saying, follow the Constitution. If all the political parties have decided to select their candidate from the South or from the North. They have democratic right to do so. But let them not confuse the issue as if leaders are there to dictate where the president should come. The Constitution has made it clear president can 
come from any part of the federation, depending on what you want, who do you want. But what they are not doing is like dividing the country because there is no question of uh, uh, the manifesto of a political party. When have APC and PDP decided to marry their manifest? Manif manifest? Okay, 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 sir. Uh, I want to come in here because we have very limited time. Two things. Number one, you said, oh, Jonathan shouldn't have run. He should have allowed Park go back to the north. And at the same time now, you're saying otherwise. So why is it that, you know, you feel all the north, I don't want to use the generalization, feel so hot about the presidency of Jonathan? And secondly, Chief Olusha Shoba was here a couple of months back, and he said there was an agreement between President Buhari and other stakeholders in the APC that power was going to come back to the south. And that was based, that was the basis for the conversation in the first place and the south supporting President Buhari. So why is the north crying foul this time? Well, it is the right of President Buhari to support anybody in Nigeria from anywhere within the Federation. But you cannot generalize it in such a way that Buhari is asking the Northerners or forcing their hands to elect a president from the South. He has no that right. But he has a right as a leader of his political party, as part of the way to win the election, you want to go to the South? Of course, by all means, he could. But it appears as if people are confusing the issue that Obasanjo had eight years term from the South and Buhari has now got eight years term from the North. And so therefore it should go back to the south. That is wrong. Our constitution does not allow that. But a political party, thinking that they will win the election as the PDP did, they are still thinking that they are being owed a term to complete the four years to make it eight on the platform of the PDP that they had in the south. So what is the quarrel about it? So, but then why do you feel hurt about Jonathan's presidency? Then why does the North feel <laughs> hurt? Why does the North feel like the Jonathan's presidency destabilized the agreement within? Why? No, it stabilized the agreement because Jonathan could have completed the two years of Yar Adwa because it is his constitutional right. Because both of them were elected on that platform. But with the agreement of which he was a party to it, he should now have allowed a Northerner to finish the remaining term of four years, to make it eight years, so that it should go back. Well, Ambassador, Ambassador Kwande, with due respect, we have just a few more minutes to go on this uh, conversation. The people of the South yes. South listening to you will feel very bad. They will think you are saying that uh, someone from the South South of Nigeria does not have an independent individual right no. to be president of Nigeria. And that's why you keep going on that the uh, Jonathan presidency disrupted uh, the agreement. In fact, the people of the South no. South would like to even come back and be president of Nigeria. But the question I wanted no. to ask you. No, I have another yeah. question. Um, yeah, and the, the question I wanted to ask you is about your good friend, uh, uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, who is your bosom friend. Uh, I'm sure you know that uh, he wants to be president. And now that uh, there seems to be a consensus 
uh, from the caliphate to every other part of the north, that the next president should come from the south. Uh, will you support your friend, Atiku Abubakar, emerging as a presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party? Qualified as he is, and with a wonderful vision and ambition to rule this country, you know that you can only rely on somebody that is prepared to do a job, which he can do it very well. But this is in material. I am not, how do you know? I am supporting him alone. It depends on Nigerian. I have only one vote. But election should be based on the arrangement and constitution of this country. You cannot wake up today and say, um, Atiku was born and he is a citizen of the South so that he will be elected. It depends on the arrangement. If the North, even if he comes if, even if the rotation comes back to the north, you cannot be sure whether it is going to the northeast or not central, because they also have right to produce the president. So I am talking about the reality of the arrangement. I am not saying uh, Jonathan was wrong. He was loved. Many people loved him. He did very well. But I am saying it was wrong for him to have scattered the arrangement put by his political party because of his personal ambition. I'm not saying because he is from the South, he was wrong. But he was wrong because he belonged to the political party called PDP. And PDP arrangement was to rotate between the South and the North. He knew that. Nobody questioned him when he was taking over the rule of the country because he was the vice president of President Umaru. We questioned him because he did not allow the arrangement to continue. Okay. Did you question him or he was sabotaged oh, yeah. by the Northern Establishment? But in any case, you know, I see a contradiction <laughs> here. On one hand, the Northern Establishment says there's no rotation in the uh, Constitution, and so anybody can be president. On the other hand, the same Northern Establishment hey. says, oh, Jonathan sorry, was wrong to well. have uh, asserted his rights as a free citizen I'm sorry of Nigeria. To... Hello, sir. I I'm sorry. You are still, you seem not to understand yourself, what <laughs> I am talking about. You are talking about Northern Establishment. Is Northern Establishment the PDP? I said this is an arrangement of the PDP. It is not the Northern Establishment that is asking for the presidency to come back to the North. No. Okay. Okay, it's sir. The PDP leadership. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Uh, these conversations will definitely continue in the coming weeks, and Nigerians will make up their mind as regards uh, what they think.